Before I begin shape number two, as I was reviewing my movie, I noticed that it was still a bit too dark. And this is the neat part about this program. As I click away, you can see still on this one that this point right here, or this area right here, is just a little bit too dark. So what I'm going to do is, and watch how cool this is, I'm going to take that point and I'm going to brighten up it to about here and now I think that that is a much better rendition. If I turn this back on and off, you can see how I've got a much better rendition of that color as it vignettes or blends into the light green. Okay, enough of that shape. Let's go do a little bit more difficult one, which is going to be this one. Now I'm going to try to do all of this out of one rectangle. So let's lock the hat and close it. Let's go to the arm and open it. Click the arm. I'm going to double click this and make sure that the selection color is something that I can work with. Now black may not work real well here, so I may be changing that as I move, but I want to keep these movies to about 10 minutes. So M key. Let's make a box. Now it's going to be green because um, you can tell that it's going to be green because the fill color was already green. So I'm going to turn on the clicky copy and I'm going to re-eye drop, probably going to be the same green, but I'm going to re-eye drop the green. It was a little bit lighter. So let's turn off the clicky copy. Let's wireframe the arm layer. Let's hit the E key and turn this in the direction of the arm and the shoulder. So let, whoops, sorry, that was not very good. Let's put this over here. Let's move this in. Now my goal is that we get this thing to bend in the right way. Now as I look at this, it's almost as if the center line should be right here. Now you can see that this rectangle, I'm going to want lines to go in this rectangle. Watch this. If this color goes just like this, then this should be one edge of the rectangle. This should be the other edge of the rectangle. That being the case, I'm going to need to move my rectangle in the the corners in the right place. So let's hit the U key. Let's put in our center lines just like this and just like this. Now without taking a thousand years here, I'm going to take the um, the uh, direct selection tool and I'm going to put the first corner of the rectangle here. Let's put this center line about right there. Let's not fix everything yet. Let's put this thing about right here and I'm going to have to do some pretty fast maneuvering or some, um, not fast, just um, clean maneuvering of these lines. Now this one is going to go right up to the corner but underneath the cuff of his glove there or his hand, whatever you want to call him, or Luigi's, whatever. Now that's pretty good. Now let's do the fine tuning. Whoops, sorry. Let's bring this one down. Let's have this one, oh and I said the wrong word before when I said horizontal. Um, these lines here, these handlebars here, and I'll show you what I mean by here. I meant parallel, not horizontal. But I'm going to, let me just finish what I'm trying to say. On this one, let's put this one right here. Look at how awful those handlebars are. First, let me back off again. This point needs to go more in the middle of the arm. This one needs to kind of just die. Um, uh, what's the word I'm searching for there? Not. Um, I'll think of it. <laughs> I can't think of the word. Okay, I have to break these handlebars now. Now before I break those handlebars with the convert tool, I'll go get the convert tool so you can see that I have the convert tool ready at my beck and call right there when I need it. Now it's this one that I talked about before. I kept on telling you that these two handlebars have to be horizontal. They're not be horizontal, they have to be parallel. So now um, I'm going to try to not, look at, I'm going to make these handlebars really short. Now if I make these handlebars really short, here's the thing that, that's going to happen. I'm not going to have to break these handlebars. And in not breaking them, there won't be any kinks in any other line that I put in there. Here's the last one. Let's put this one down a little bit right here. And let's fix this one here. Now, this is where I say I want these parallel. So you can see, if I don't want a, uh, a bump or a kink on his shoulder, I better get those relatively parallel. Okay, now that's not bad geometry. Let's do a little bit more here. I can fix this when I put in the left line, if you follow what I just said there. Let's go move this one a little bit farther out. Let me save the file before it quits. Okay, now let's judge if the light green is in the right place. 
this light green as it works its way through the arm is in a pretty good place. Does it have to be perfect? No. I'm even going to try to do this nice shadow. Look at the nice shadow that the cuff has here. Now that's pretty good. Now notice I didn't care about his muscle. I'm going to move this in when I put in the left line. So now let's pull this down just a little bit like this. This one should probably move up a little higher now that I look at it. Okay, let's turn off the clicky copy. Let's put this one up to about here. Now let's take the whole time to fix the darn geometry so I can pull it out and make it all pretty. And then, and again, again, again I say pretty. I don't know why I say pretty, but it is pretty. Command S to save the file. Now, before when you had the center lines done, you can tell that I've taken quite a bit of time to get them right. Let me shorten this just a skosh, right about there. I'm going to duplicate the arm because I'm going to call the bottom one safe one. Uh, lock it, what did I say before, and hide it. Command S to save the file. Now, we should go do some of the coloring. I told you you should color as you go. So let's turn on the clicky copy. Let's Hold the command key and unwire frame the arm so you can see the arm is back to normal. Let's take the eyedropper and let's go grab this point and eyedrop everywhere I go. Now I'm not going to grab the dark yet. I'm going to grab the light because I want to add the dark tones when I do the very last thing is I'm going to add the dark shadow over here. And that's something you can hear too. Keep this in the back of your mind. Color all the big things first then color the little things last. Now, does that make any sense to you? It makes more sense to me than I could tell you, but you have to watch it to have it be there. I guess I don't need this right now, but I'll put it up here. So now here's what I've colored so far. Now don't panic, this is exactly what it needs to be. So let's go over here and make that just a little bit darker, and you can tell now that's pretty good. Now, here comes the left, right, top, and bottom lines. So this one should be easy but let's position them where they need to go. Let's put, see how the muscle, see how the muscle curves itself right here? Well, I can choose to make that muscle color, I'm gonna need a line to do the light and a line to do the dark. So it doesn't matter which one you choose, let's do the dark one first. Now notice how when I clicked, I can now move this one in and I can move this arm up a little bit here. I'm going to move this in so it goes real short and then pull this up. Now look at how nicely I've got the muscle working, but this is in the wrong place. So it's way too shallow. It needs to move up to the top. So let's now move this way up to the top. Now conveniently, this should move up a little bit like this, but this one on the bottom now, whoops, this one on the bottom needs to move up where his arm is. So let's pull this out a little bit and I think I can just leave it like that. That's not bad geometry right there. Let's come in a little bit more like this, save the file, remember to save the file, and don't do any more lines on the left until you finish the line on the right. Okay, let's have the line on the right be the actual one that's going to be the light line for the shadow. Wouldn't matter, I could do the shadow line, but now it makes more sense that all I'd have to do, look, is put one right there, right? If I put one right there later and color it dark, then it'll go from light to dark. Now, let's define the top of the arm a little bit too, I'm gonna command Z back, that was a little bit too high. Let's define the top of the arm and let's define the bottom of the arm. Now, do you guys see how wide this darkness is? The rule of thumb is, and I've told you before, that if I have the center of that color here, remember these lines control the center of colors. So, I need two lines here. I need one exactly in the center of that color about here. Then I need one in the center of that color in a little while there. But I told you that I don't want to put too many in. For right now, I just want the left, right, top, and bottom. So, question, do I have the left, right, top, and bottom? Answer, yes. So now before you go on and get all excited to go on to the next step, I'm going to move this one right down where it needs to go. Look at how precise I'm trying to be in following the theory. In a few minutes, I will add the one that I need to add. Look at this is up too high. What do you got to do before you go color it or move this line down? You've got to retract the handlebars. Now, just so that I'm staying, even though this is probably something I don't need to do, I'm going to move this one down to form pretty geometry. And that's what I talk about pretty geometry there is a nice definition. This one now can pull down a little farther. 
Command S to save the file. Now let's color it. When I color the upper arm, when I color this upper arm, you're not going to see any of the light line left because I don't have a line to color the light area. So let's go eyedropper, click, command key, grab that tone, command key, grab the tone, command key, grab the tone. Now this dark that I'm putting here is going to go up halfway to this line. It's going to be too far. Now I may not need that extra line I told you about. I may need just to pull this handlebar a little farther down. Remember, if this color here controls the light green and this color here for his elbow controls the dark green, then all I have to do is yank the handlebars one way or another way, longer or shorter, to make the color either go longer or the color go shorter. Now, let's take this and, and, and to save on this, I told you that I was going to add another line here. Well, why do I need to add another line? Why don't I just push this one real close to the edge? Take just a minute out like that, just so long as it's far enough into the cuff. And now I could use this one, right? I could use this one if I get real close to color the dark. Now, all I have to do is pull the handlebars, this one, and this one and overlap them, right? And I'll know how much to overlap them when I turn the clicky copy on and off. So this one goes to the dark. You know, I don't even remember if I colored that one. Let's go to the dark. Let's go to the light. Let's finish this off. See, I'm always one that says less lines the better. Now let's turn off the clicky copy and let's see how that looks. Now, Look at how the hardness is of that line. If I turn the clicky copy back on, I have a lot more work to do. So it means that this one has to pull even farther, and this one has to pull even farther, and now I have to back off of this one till it gets to be a pretty transition. Okay, that's almost exactly what I see here and it's far enough over, probably is. Let me turn on the clicky copy and see how far enough I have it over. Um, this one could pull just a little bit farther this way. This one could pull just a little bit closer. I meant closer, not farther. And now that's the kind of care that I'm trying to take. I want those shadow lines to get into the right area. So now I have to have, I'm going to get close. I have to have this one control more of that area than the light green. Now let's turn the clicky copy back on and you can tell I've almost got that exactly where it needs to go. Okay, this one needs to go to the dark color. This one needs to go to the light color. This one needs to back off just like this and this one needs to pull farther over and I should have that color not do very well. <laughs> Let me pull it a little farther. Okay, that's good. A little farther. Okay, that's good. A little closer in. Okay, now I've got that shadow working quite well there. Let's hit Command S to save the file. Let's see what I what it looks like. Okay, obviously, the, see that one right there? I don't know if I ever colored it. See when I turn on the clicky copy or off the clicky copy? Let's go color that light green. And now let's see. Okay, I've got everything working really good there. Now I need those extra couple lines. Which ones? The ones that control the light green on the top of the muscle and probably one to color through this area. So this mesh gets duplicated. Double click it, call it safe two. I guess these movies are never gonna be 10 minutes. They're gonna be more like 15. Lock and hide this one. I'm almost done. So now all we have to do is take the U key. Let's put one right here and let's put one right at the top of the muscle. Now, if I take the eyedropper and I just color the top of the muscle, hold the command key color right there. Let's hold the command key color right there. If I pull these two handlebars over each other, I'll get a better muscle control in that area. Now let's take this one. This one's gonna have to pull farther that way and this one's gonna have to go less. No. Let's go down like this. I want to make sure I color this one and I color this one. Let's turn on the clicky copy. You can see how I've got that muscle working real nice right there. That's almost beautiful. Let's turn this on and see. Okay, I do have another problem. Look at the shoulder. The muscle looks good. 
but do you see how the color goes over the shoulder like this? So I'm probably going to have to take the U key, click another one right there so that I can force the color, this one that I have selected right there, that one is going to allow for the bright green to go up a little farther. Now if I color all three of these in the same order, that shoulder color should go up a little higher. It's still not bright enough for some reason. Let's go a little brighter like this. Okay, well now it's going way too bright. Maybe I didn't even color it before. Okay, right there. This now is where you take a little bit more time out and you color. Let's go right here. Let's see, this should be pretty even. Um, let me see why I'm not getting this to go. And here's a good trick. I'm gonna click away. Although this looks good, there's a little dark patch right there. So what I want to do is click it and go color it the same color as that one. Actually, let me go color it the same color as this one. There we go. Now the shoulder looks nicely defined. Command S to save the file. Let's see if there's any crinkling on his um, elbow right here. Well, there is, but on the dark that goes left and right, if you can call that left and right. So what I think I, all I need to do is yank this one down farther, yank it even down farther, pull this one up a little bit. Oh, that's too high. Let's get closer and now look at how I've got this color. I'll even exaggerate this for you. Look at how I can pull this one up too high and I've got that nice edge working there. And that's not bad. Actually, the edge should go down a little farther. So if this one goes down a little farther and this one goes down a little farther with it, that edge for the elbow, look at how far I'm pulling the handlebar for the light green. Let's see what happens there. Whoops, I don't want to get it too far. Let's pull this one down just a little bit more here. Okay, that's working. I have no problem doing that. That's fine. If I have to add another line right where I'm pointing right there, I will, but I really don't think I do. Let's go here. This one works. Let's pull this one down a little farther like that. Let's pull this one down a little farther like that. Let's go see how hard that transition is of color here. Pretty good. That's pretty good. You know, that's a nice definition of that arm. I'm going to leave it just like this and leave the file right there. It only took me again three layers. I probably should put one in here. I am going to put one in here and color these two points. Um, don't worry about that. All you have to do is take this eyedropper and recolor that right here. Let's take the eyedropper and recolor that right here. And now that should look good. Yeah, that kind of helped. Okay, there's a good solution for his arm, which started out exactly like the rectangle that it is. Let's now turn this off and you can see, again, let me unlock these. Here's the first one, there's the solution. Here's the second one, there's the solution. You can see left, right, top, bottom, okay, with the center lines. Here's the third one. Now, how many lines did I add? Not many. And that actually finished off the whole file. Nothing was different from this one to this one. Everything was the same, but it was the detail that made me add the lines. Let me turn these two off save, lock those two up. Remember, this is what happens if you have one on that you've moved over. See this light green? This light green here isn't from the top one, it's from the bottom one. Make sure you turn off the visibility, okay? Command S to save the file. We'll go on to the next movie.